It's Marnie Pearson and Sue Painter back with the online business reality show or Marnie and Sue's Peep Show where we pull back the curtains on our lives and businesses and give you a little bit of behind the scenes and it's been one heck of a morning here. <laughs> so <laughs> finally made it. So how you doing, Sue? I'm fine. Excuse us, everyone. We were having a little technical difficulty. Marnie couldn't hear me, and then when she started hearing me, all of a sudden I couldn't hear her. So we had to figure out what was going on. But we're glad we're here today. And Marnie, it sounds like it's been a hectic morning for you. So what's been going on? Oh, I'm just, uh, I've been trying to hurry up and get a page up to on my product creation where I'm offering people three options. Yeah. And so I, I had my head in that and lost track of time and um, and then I had we moved uh, Chris in over the weekend all of his stuff and so I had this big pile of <laughs> stuff behind me when we were out ready to start and I'm like I can't do that <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to invest in a green screen and then that way you can just have something behind you yeah. although um, Lynn Terry had a great idea and for live shows where you can't replace the green screen later with a background um, I think I'm going to do what she did. She bought like a, a Soji screen, just a, a, you know, one of those things that folds up kind of an oriental screen and she just puts it behind her and it makes the prettiest backdrop for her videos if they're live, like for a scope or for what we do on Google Hangout because I can't replace the green screen with the background. So hmm. anyway, that might work. So um, I don't know what we're going to talk about today, except I know you have a wedding upcoming. Um, yep. Oh, and by the way, when is your wedding? By right. the way. What time? Uh, six o'clock. I might come. Really? Cool. Well, we've had a, well, we've had a sad thing happen, but it actually frees me up to come if I could still be invited. But you might already have as many people there as you need. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, cool. So here's what happened. This is a sad thing. And this is a great story of how life is precious and do what you want to do, honey, because you never know when it's going to end. So our really good friends from college, uh, a guy I was in the Auburn band with who's a real good friend of mine, he and his wife are going to come up here um, over Labor Day weekend. As you know, Marnie, that's why I couldn't come to your wedding. And so I got a call from him. And you know, um, you might have heard on the news about that guy in the at the Atlanta Braves game who fell to his death he fell out of the stands onto the lower stands at the Atlanta Braves came a couple days ago that was the brother-in-law of this couple oh wow oh. so this week instead of celebrating Labor Day they're burying their brother-in-law and there's gonna be uh, the service I guess is one day and then the break he was a really really rabid Braves fan he had not missed a game in like 20 he had season tickets for 28 years in the same place in the stands for 28 years so the Braves are actually donating the Braves field and they're gonna have a ceremony for him there on Thursday oh, wow. so um, consequently you know our company is not coming and we've got tickets to take them out and see all kinds of musical things this weekend so now we've got all these extra tickets to get rid of but we feel so sad for him and so and so sorry for their loss and it really is Bill and I look at each, each other every morning and we're like how can we make this day be happy and add it to our memories because you never know when it's gonna be over you know just like that it's over so anyway, that frees us up. We now no longer have company coming. So honestly, we might come to your wedding. No kidding. If you think that you have room, I don't want to horn in if you've already made your guest list. No, I have room. It's nothing fancy though. So don't even, <laughs> don't get, it's pretty simple. So okay. do I have to wear a dress? Uh, if you want, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I have a dress. <laughs> wear whatever you want. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see. Okay. Six o'clock. Well, why don't you, will you email me the address? Yeah. Okay, cool. I might come then. That'd be great. I think we should do a live periscope of your wedding. <laughs> okay, you, you do it, okay? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. It'd be great, though, to meet your new honey. Okay. Um, so, then changing topics, I have um, a small rant. Okay. <laughs> Not really. Small rant? You do small rants? <laughs> Just about... Um, politeness when you're networking with someone um, and like kind of the rules of behavior which if you're in business I would assume that you know but here's what I've noticed is happening a lot of people want to get in front of me and let me know about their products and services 
And, you know, they know that I know a lot of people, as you know a lot of people, Marnie. And so they, they're looking to network, and they're kind of looking to get into my network of who I know. So the last couple of times that has happened to me, I normally get with somebody, and, it's, and what I'm noticing is that, number one, they're not really prepared to tell me what it is they do in a very succinct way, nor are they prepared me prepared to let me know their price points and who their ideal client is so that if they're asking me to send them people, you know, I need to know that. But number two or three or however many it is that I'm on, they never ask me about me and my business at all. The conversation is completely one-sided. And that's rude to me. I would never expect to go meet someone and shake their hand and say, hi, we're here to get to know each other and not ask them about what it is they do. So I feel used in that case. Like, not only do you just want to get in front of me and the people that I know out in the online world, but you don't even give a crap what it is that I do. And not that I'm like trolling for a client, but it, to me, it's just polite behavior to let the conversation be a two-way conversation. Now, I don't know, maybe that's a Southern thing, but if it's, a, if it's a Southern thing, it ought to be an international thing. And I just, I've noticed that, you know, savvy business owners will, of course, have that give and take. But sometimes, uh, lately, I'm finding that that's just not so. And sometimes these people are new to business, but like get a hint. And if you're going to expect someone to listen for 10 or 15 minutes about what you do, have it really quickly formulated. And also, have the courtesy to ask, how can I help you? What? Tell me what you do and how can I help you? I just think it's rude. It feels one-sided and I feel used. So that's the ramp. Huh? I agree. I think you're right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Sorry about my dog. That's okay. I tried to get her to be quiet before we started, and now she's insane. Not to give her a large bone. <laughs> Keep her busy before we get started. Oh. I don't even, I just hear her a little bit, and actually, she's quit now. So, um, so anyway, that's the thing that I'm noticing. And then, I don't know, what else do you want to talk about? You probably have wedding plans on your mind. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all I'm thinking of is moving. We got him moved in and everything, so. Yeah. And you got your place all cleaned out. Oh, I know. I re I saw on Facebook about how you must have been cleaning out your refrigerator and that that glass broken went everywhere. I that is annoying, and I guess that's supposed to be a safety fixture, but it still shouldn't break that easily. No, see, all of the shelves have plastic around them except for this one piece that separates. Um, it's like right on top of all the crisper sections. Yeah, and. My daughter had spilled, looked like soy sauce, up under all of the edges of that. And I, so I popped it out. I was like, oh, cool. I can clean this out. I'll take it over there. And then, anyway, I didn't know porcelain would shatter glass. But Chris told me that's the way police officers break into cars is they take the porcelain part of a spark plug and tap it on the window and it'll shatter the safety glass. Porcelain will shatter safety glass. Yep. Heard it here first, people. Porcelain, <laughs> porcelain, porcelain will shatter safety glass. You know, I see those stupid things in those catalogs about don't get stuck in your car, buy this little breakout tool. And I wonder, I've, I don't have one. I'm not intending to get stuck in my car, but I wonder if the tip on those little tools is porcelain. Probably, porcelain. Probably is. I bet it is. I bet it is. That's kind of amazing, huh? Yeah. So. so so you're going to get married on Friday and then you're headed up to the mountains and then next week you'll be back and we'll all be calling you Marnie Marcus. <laughs> yep. Yep. Got to so, I like Marnie Marcus. It sounds like an author. That's what somebody else said. So maybe I'm. But now what will you do about the books that you already have published under your current name? Are you going to update them and change the name? Because people then who follow you might not know how to find you. Or are you just going to do up, you know, books in the future under Marnie Marcus? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, if I don't see redoing all those books, <laughs> I just can't. Um, no. I think they'll just have to be the way they are. Unless I, there are a few that I'd like to revise, and I might, I might change the name. I would have a suggestion for you. I think that if you're going to do that, I would change. I would change the author name on those books. If you're going to do it and going forward in your new books, I believe I would use Marnie Pearson Marcus. Oh, okay. So keep them both that way. Because they if someone loves Marnie Pearson's books and they want to find all your new things, 
they're not going to find you once that person is gone. Right. So you might publish under all of those names for a good while and then send out, you know, a notice to your list, make it fun or something, you know, send out a notice to your list and let them know that, um, you know, your books will remain under your previous name, but going forward, you're going to be publishing under the double name so that they can find you. That's a good idea. Yeah. I probably do that. Yeah. And in that way you can use your new name, but people who are looking for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I didn't, didn't think about that. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, the other thing that's kind of on my mind today is, you know, Wayne Dyer passed away yeah. and um, I had been, I had met him um, in a big, large audience a long time ago, but it got me thinking about, you know, what is the legacy that you and I want to leave for others when we are no longer here? I guess I was thinking about that too because this brother-in-law of these good friends of ours died in the Atlanta Brave Stadium as well. Um, but of all people who have had an effect on others, I mean, I don't think probably Wayne Dyer even knew the effect he had on really millions and millions of people. There were those people who met him personally and then there were those people who just read his books or maybe heard one of his lectures or saw him on TV. I know he used to be he used to be on Oprah a lot. He's probably also been a lot on Oprah's new network, OWN, I don't know. But it is like that's a that's a heck of a legacy for a person to leave. And it does make me think about, you know, if I died tomorrow, where would my legacy be? What would people be better for in the world for my having been here? So I think about that and I think about, I hope to leave a legacy through my business that I've helped people achieve financial independence by setting them up in businesses and letting them understand how it is that they can make it in the world without having to be dependent on an employer, you know, but I don't know what kind of legacy do you want to leave? <laughs> Let's say, um, I guess if I had to nutshell it, hope. <laughs> oh. I think that that theme comes out in everything that I do, whether I'm writing a book or yeah. helping somebody build a business or whatever. It's just that the hope that they can keep going and that yeah. they make it that yeah. work out, I guess. Yeah. Hope no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good legacy to leave. I like, I think my word, if I had to narrow it down to one word, my word might be empowerment um, because I do really hope that I can, I have encouraged or maybe encouragement. It would be maybe encouragement rather than empowerment because I do like to encourage people to go for what it is they have in their minds to do, whether it's taking a trip or whatever. You know, we get in, we get chains on us sometimes and then we get so used to the chains that we don't even think of them as chains anymore. And that's, um, you know, animal, you can train animals, you know, you can, you can, when, when I don't like electric fences for dogs, I don't believe in them, but I know a lot of people do use them, but you know, they train their dog to this electric fence that goes around their border of their property. And eventually after a while they can turn the electric fence off because the dog won't leave anyway. Mm -hmm. And because they're so conditioned to knowing what's going to happen. And I think people are sometimes like that in their lives, in personal relationships, um, you know, you probably were that way a little bit before you left your husband. It was like that was what you knew and you couldn't even get yourself out of that box. So I like encouragement and hope. That's that's not too bad. Those are two good words for us to leave as legacies, I think. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day that, that she's had like a rough life. You know, it's one of, you know how people serially get into bad marriages, you know, just one right after another and stuff. And, and she was talking about how her son had married a girl that there was no divorce in her family. She didn't, it, that was just nothing that she'd ever dealt with. She never dealt with any real major dysfunction of any kind. And as my friend was talking about it, I thought, you know, we need people like that because they help us realize that it doesn't have to be that way. Cause yeah. when you're in the middle of it, you know, there were certain people who came along in my life that had really good marriages. You know, uh, three people I can think of off the top of my mind, three couples that I got to know that had really good marriages and helped me see that, you know, I think you and Bill have a really good marriage, but I didn't know y'all at the time, but um, I just, 
it let me know it was possible, you know, mm -hmm. I really hadn't seen it modeled and I hadn't lived it. Mm -hmm. And you need some of those people. I mean, as much as we need people who've been through the trenches and can lead you out because they know how to get out. I think <laughs> there's a value in the people who've never had to deal with the problem. Right. To let you know, Hey, this isn't normal. <laughs> this doesn't have to be this way. You know, you could have something different. I know. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who, you know, he's worked for this company for, I don't even know how long, most of his career since he got out of college. And he's so fear-based about his job. It's like, well, I better not take out, take extra time over holiday weekend. I've got the hiccups. Excuse me. Uh -oh. I don't have any sugar that I can swallow right now. So you might just have to bear with him. Um, but you know, he's like, but doesn't think that he could get away even for a holiday weekend. Doesn't think that um, he should miss that much work. And this, this company, he's been with them for probably 20 years. He's, he's one of their top producers. They're sure as hell not going to lose him because he wants a day off. So I don't know whether it's him projecting onto, onto them. And really it's, he's not comfortable getting away from something he knows some well, or whether the company really would act like they care that he took time off. But, you know, I'm not going to be a slave to any company if I'm going to be a slave to a business, it's going to be to my own business, you know? So I don't, people kind of forget their humanity. They feel like they're a cog in a machine and you have to stand up and, and not, and you know, be a human and you have to have downtime. You have to have time off. So I don't know. I hear people do say that and I'm like, just stand up. I've had a couple of clients who had full-time jobs and they wanted to, um, they were afraid to quit to go into their new business for financial reasons, you know, and we all have to be respons responsible financially. So I would say to them, go in and tell them that you want to work part time. You're so good at what you do. They're sure as hell not going to lose you. Oh, I can't do it. The world will come to an end. They'll fire me. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, just ask. Well, then they'll know I'm thinking about leaving. Just ask. You are thinking about leaving. So why are you leaving a lie? You know, just, Yes. And I think I've had five clients over the years who finally went to their employer and said, I need to back it down. I want to work part time. Every one of them. Oh my gosh, we don't want to leave you, lose you. You can work from home. You can work part time. All they have to do is ask, but they're get they're so in that box. They're afraid to ask. So now I'm going to shut up and let you talk because I'm tired of talking with the hiccups. I don't know where these came from. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> How to give a speech while you've got the hiccups. <laughs> really. Um, yeah, I, you get very myopic about things, you know, um, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I do that. I mean, I'm doing that in one aspect of my life and it, I keep asking myself, uh, what if you're just not seeing, you know, you need to step outside of this. They say you can't see the picture from inside the frame. Yeah. You know, and right. so I keep trying to look at it from a different angle, you know, and I think that's why it's good to have mentors or mm -hmm. uh, colleagues who can look at something from a different angle. A lot of times um, I like to pick the brains of somebody that's in a completely different business than mine. Yeah. Because the way they're doing it for their industry can be totally different. And then you take back and bring it back to your business and it makes you look at it in a different way where you could just be, it's sort of like I years ago I used to program, do a lot of computer programming, and I would nest and nest on a problem, trying to figure it out, just beat my head again. Okay, why is this program not working? And then if I'd step away and go do some dishes and come back, then there would be the answer right in front of my face. You know, it'd be like a period that was in the wrong spot or something, you know. But you you just can't see it when you're in the thick of it you know and you have to get outside your box and you have to have people around you whether it's a friend or a mentor or a coach or whoever it is who can say to you what are you thinking I mean what what the hell you know what do you think why are you thinking this I agree with you you have to have people who can help pop that I call it being like wrapped in saran wrap and somebody needs to come along and just pop that saran wrap and and you know let let people out of their little bubble like they're living in a little bubble so yeah, I agree. That's how 
everybody who does who leaves legacies you know like we were talking about they they constantly kind of prick their own bubble or have somebody who pricks it for them so that they're not thinking I can't do that I hate those terms I hate the words I can't do that and most of the time when I hear them I hear them from people who haven't even tried how do they know they can't do it they haven't even tried it's the fear that's holding them back not that they can't do it yeah so that's true okay well we have a little bit while more to go what else do you want to talk about how is your um Mm. Your visual, your your uh, pictures. Content helper. Huh? Visual, visualcontenthelper.com. There you go. How's that going? It's slow, and the reason it's slow is because um, the partner that I have, who is supposed to be really the operations officer, has gotten really busy with another project, so she's not really pushing it out th out there as much as um, I would like to see it push. So, but I like the project because we're learning a lot. We're learning what works and we're learning what doesn't work. And I still got pick up, sorry. And, um, and it does bring out the power of affiliate marketing because we did have someone approach us about being an affiliate for us. And um, they did their first mailing uh, last night or this morning one. And all of a sudden we got this slew of orders. Oh, cool. uh, it really is about visibility. You know, it really is about building public and visibility. And when you're starting from zero, which is what we were starting with, with visualcontenthelper.com is a totally new website. So, you know, she was building social media platform and, and of course we're building a pages for Google to index and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to take a good six months anyway. So I think that eventually it will be on a roll, but we need to be doing more to push it. It doesn't matter that, I mean, it's an amazingly inexpensive product. You know, if you, if you use PowerPoint, we have two packages that are in PowerPoint where you get like six different professionally designed PowerPoint themes that I think there's a total of 80 or 90 slides in those themes. And you can customize them if you want to, but those six PowerPoint themes are like 17 bucks. Well, goodness sake, I mean, when I go buy a PowerPoint theme, that when I want a fancy theme and I go to some of these places that develop PowerPoint themes, I sometimes pay $50, $60 for one thing, and it will typically have about eight slides in it. That's it. So mm -hmm. here there's six themes for 17 bucks, and there's almost 100 slides. So if the value is there and the, de and the good graphic design is there, it's just a matter of getting the word out, which is a really good point. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you can walk on water seven different ways. I don't care if you can walk a tightrope. I don't care what. If people don't know about you, you may you don't exist in the marketing in the business world anyway. You've got to get that visibility out there. Yeah, I agree. It really does come down to the visibility. I think. Um, are you having any luck with the Facebook ads at all? Or I haven't done I did a Facebook ad for my own webinar that was about blog visibility but I haven't done a Facebook ad for visual content helper yet so we were kind of waiting to get some sales so we had some money in the pot to pay for ads but I think I'm just gonna have to go ahead and do it and front the money and then see what we get with it so that's a whole nother nut to crack thanks yeah. for the ads are, to me they're like a mystical magical thing you never know what's gonna really work what's really not gonna work and you know, it's it's one thing I can get it down usually to a pretty cheap pay per click, and I can get clicks, but then you've got to make that juncture between the click and actually taking advantage of what's in that click and opting in. So it's a two step process. You've got to get the Facebook click and you've got to get the opt in click. And most people think they've just got to get the Facebook click. You can get a thousand clicks, and if a thou in a thousand clicks, you've only got twenty people who complete the action. Then you know that it's they're not interested in your product, or it's your copy, or it's your graphic, or it's something. You got to start moving that around. Yeah. So, and you know that you do Facebook ads more than I do, really. Yeah. The. Uh, I'm kind of. Uh, I was thinking the real money is being Facebook, you know, because they're sitting there making money whether you get any results or not while you're sitting there clicking and figuring out, you know, what's going to work or whatever. It, um, 
Yeah, my Facebook. <laughs> like the next Facebook is what I'd like to do. <laughs> you know? uh, Facebook is definitely um, gets more and more of my money every month. So, yeah. yeah, I understand that. Well, invent the next Facebook. Actually, just to play. Well, I think that's why people are jumping to Periscope too, and some of these others. And now I keep hearing about Blab. Do you know anything about Blab? No. Uh. Uh. I mean, I'm just barely learning Periscope. I don't want to have to go learn Blab too. But at any rate, people are. Uh, talking about those two and I have noticed that I do get followers on Periscope quicker and easier than on Facebook so I really wonder I've heard people say that the bloom is off the Facebook rose and it might be for some things but they have such an amazing data mine that there will always be companies who will want into that data mine although it may end up being for bigger companies who can afford it and I have heard some of that and I've seen some of that, that bigger companies really get to play on Facebook. They get to do things that smaller companies don't want, don't, don't get to do. And I don't think that's fair. It's hard to be a small business owner. You've got, you've got two strikes against you because you don't get the privileges that a large business does. You also don't get the bailouts. You know, nobody's going to bail my business out or your business out, but boy, we've bailed out banks and we've bailed out car manufacturers. It's corporate welfare. Yeah, it's true. So, at any rate, it's noon, and I'm going next to the gym to work my leg. What else do I ever do in the gym? <laughs> and I don't think, let's see, we're not doing next week because you're going to be, oh, no, we're doing it at the end of the week, aren't we? I think so. Let me look real quick and see. We are doing the peep show on um, September 10th. Thursday, September 10th at 2 Eastern, 1 Central. So we will be here next week and we will hear a blow by blow description of Marnie's honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> With her new lingerie that she's been out here buying. <laughs> uh, we had a request to know more about Periscope, and I know we can't probably. Okay. Now, but where could somebody go? You've been doing Periscope, so yep. should they go to your Facebook wall? Is all, yeah, go to go. Actually, if you go to uh, my Facebook wall, Confident Marketer, Facebook.com, Confident Marketer, um, I'm going to drop a video in about an hour or two. So wait an hour or two. There'll be a video on there about how to follow me on Periscope and a little bit about Periscope. And there's also a guide that you can get. Let me see real quick if I can figure out the link, Marnie, and you can post it maybe. Um, hang on just a second. Uh, let's see. Yeah, maybe um, send it to me on Facebook and I'll add it. Yeah, I will. I'll send it to you. Hang on just a second. I'm seeing if it'll come up here. Um, Thanks for the question, Carolyn, by the way. Okay. Oh, was that Carolyn? Yeah. Okay. Hang on. I should have it just here in a second. I, while she's looking that up, I have noticed that, like, I watched yours and I watched Laura West, and I know how y'all, you acknowledge everybody who's saying something or they start showing up. It seems like a lot of activity on there. There is a lot. Watching. Yeah, there is a lot of activity. Um I don't know. Well, I'll send it out. I can't, I can't find it quickly enough. So I will send it. I will put the link in the replay. Um, and maybe that way now I've lost you, Marnie. I don't even know. Can you still see me? I see you. Okay. Um, so maybe that would be the way to do it because I can't come up with it really quickly. But what I wanted to say is Sheena White shared with us a oh I know where it is it's it's in the stupid login it's in the stupid blog post hang on a minute I can find it I had to, re, I had to think about where I was gonna go get it I have so much content now in the web that sometimes I forget where I have put things and that's a bad thing uh, But Carolyn, while she's doing that, what it does is it lets you create a live streaming video right then. And then it, anybody who's following you, it'll send out a little message to them that, you know, Super Painter's making a Periscope right now. And then they can come and watch it. And then there's a little, you click the screen on your phone, it'll, 
you can send her some love and these little hearts show up or you can send her questions right then. And, um, anyway, it seems like there's quite a few people on there when you're doing it. So, okay. okay I just sent you a link on Facebook. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll yeah. I, did you get it? Uh, I think I went out of Facebook just to, It's SheenaWhite.com slash Periscope dash ebook. S H E E N A W H I T E, SheenaWhite.com slash Periscope dash ebook. And that's a free guide. That's Sheena's free guide for how to use Periscope. There are some other good articles on Periscope too. So, um, but that's how you get that guide. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Now, minimize all of this stuff. There you are. You're back again. Okay. Well, we've run over time, but we will see you next Thursday. And perhaps I'll see you Friday night and get to wave at you at your wedding. I hope so. Do you know how many people are coming? Um, I think it's just maybe about 60 people or something like that. It's, it's small and just light refreshments. It's not anything. Yeah. Well, send me the address and I'll see if we can get there since our company had to bail on us and for, for certainly for sad circumstances. And we will see everybody next Thursday. Have a great Labor Day weekend if you're a U.S.-based person. This is the a formal, official beginning of the football season. So I guess we'll all be sitting in front of our TVs watching that if you're a football person. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.